live. What's up, everyone? Bowie is wanting in as director chair. I will help him as soon as I get you guys set up. So today, Jeff and I are going to work on a piece together. I'm going to do some alcohol inks, and he's going to do some airbrush. We're going to use some stencils, and it's going to be amazing. You guys, just let me know if you can hear me okay. I'm pulling up my chat right now so I can see if you guys can hear me okay. Looks like I can zoom you guys in just a little bit. Kim, it's a total win. We used to have a giveaway for the first person in the room. We should probably start doing that again. That was a lot of fun. Sound is great. Sweet. Kim, Kimberly, Arlene, Sylvia. How are things where you guys are today? I hope it's amazing. Maxi, what's up? So I'm going to be using a simple palette today. I'm going to be using a pink, a teal, and a yellow. It's my go-to alcohol ink palette. These specific colors are Copic Refill number RV09 Fuchsia, Copic Refill BG49 Duck Blue, and Spectrum Noir LY1. I got all these from Blick.com. I'm not sponsored by them, but if you're watching Blick, what's up? It's cloudy here too as well. You're watching from Spain. I want to go to Spain. Did you say something to me, B? Okay. Um, we had tornadoes in Dallas earlier today, but um, seems like the weather has moved on. Did you just say Chuck Norris lives here, so tornadoes don't really come here? They go around Dallas because they want to go around Chuck Norris. I didn't even know that. Learn something new every day. You broke a rib. Joe says he hopes that if you broke a rib that it was from laughing. Uh, as do I. Frosty in England. That's another place we have been wanting to go to. The hexagon panel, I've been debating on putting them on the website. This is one of our um, ready for alcohol ink panels. I have them in like squares and rectangles. I don't have the hexagon ones up. I didn't know if that is something that you guys would be interested in. But if you are, comment and I'll talk to my builder about getting these on the website. Kim says Chuck Norris is my hero. Okay, so I'm going to be using 91% isopropyl alcohol. I have gone ahead and put it in this like ketchup y squeeze bottle just for ease of use. What's up, Melody? And we're going to get started. My best advice Hi, Joy, how are you? Snow in Colorado. My sister's in Colorado. I want to play in the snow in Colorado. Hopefully, we'll make it up there to go snowboarding again this year. Um, my best advice for doing alcohol inks is to have a surface prepped. I like to pour on boards like this. Um, I don't have to prep them. This is straight off the shelf. And I don't have to worry about it warping at all because of adding heat to it, like um, Yupo papers and things like that. And um, I didn't even get to tell you my best tip is use a lot of alcohol and not that many inks because the more ink you use, the darker it's going to be, and uh, that's fine, but for what we're trying to do today with um, doing airbrush on top of it, having it be super dark is not really conducive to having airbrush on it, just because it's too, when it's too dark, you can't really see what the airbrush is doing, so we're going to keep it really light. First step, drench with alcohol. Um, make sure you don't have any open flames about when you do this because you don't want to catch anything on fire. 
and open flame and rubbing alcohol is a great formula for fire. So I'm going to start with my yellow because it tends to be diluted the fastest because it's just a lighter color. And I'm going to try not to cross over my pink and my blue and my yellow all in one area. So pink and blue can make a secondary color. Yellow for what? So they all make great colors mixed one on one together, but all three together makes not fun color. Is the pupil the same size on the other one? Oh, okay. Yes, no, the iris is the color, my bad. So they make great colors mixed one on one together, but all three together make a very disgusting yellowy browny color. So I'm gonna do my best to not let all three of them mix. We'll see how well that goes. Kim says, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you for that reminder. Sandy Sanders, what are you doing? I'm hoping you're having a great lunch break. We were just talking about um, going to Colorado, hopefully soon. And I was thinking I should message Sandy and here you are, it's like fate. Okay, then I just put a little bit more alcohol on top of it to help it to flow a little bit better. This is the dangerous part. When you start to swirl everything around, that's when things can get muddy and colors will start mixing together that shouldn't. So I'm gonna still be careful, but proceed and fill in any parts that are void. I put the most yellow down and it seems to be still the most faint. That's just the nature of the color, unfortunately. I'm trying my best not to add too much color because we want to keep, keep it light. This is kind of like when you have resin that's too thin or acrylics that are too thin. When they're really thin and they start mixing together, they don't make pretty colors. So be advised not to do too much mixing around. We just got to find a place to go, Sandy. Don't do too much mixing around so that you don't have to worry about all three colors mixing together. Just give it a swirl for coverage and then let it live. I'm using a this, an embossing gun. I forgot what it's called for a really quick second, but I'm good. We're good. To help evaporate my alcohol so that my inks will kind of dry in the place that it is when the alcohol evaporates. I hope that makes sense. In my head, it makes sense when I say things sometimes, and then when I say it out loud, it doesn't really make sense. So you guys let me know if I say something that's on the confusing side. That sound in the background is Jeff's air compressor. Also a tip for doing alcohol inks is the less heat and manipulating that you do with a heat source, the softer your blends will be. So for example, over here, I'll do a little bit extra manipulating and moving around with the embossing gun. And you'll be able to see the, the darker lines that happen because of drying it and moving it around. So it's already started to give those areas. I don't want to do that too much. I want it to be a softer piece. So essentially I'm just very far away and swirling my embossing 
heat gun to help everything dry a little bit faster. If I wasn't doing this on a live and it was just a piece I was doing at home, I would put all the inks down and then walk away and let it just do what it's gonna do. Because in my opinion, that's the best looking alcohol ink is that the natural blend that it does on its own. It's gray and misting in Georgia. Georgia usually has beautiful weather. So you guys can see over here the darker lines from the extra manipulating as opposed to everything else being a lot softer. I'm gonna try to avoid getting too much of this but I'll have to do a little bit more just to balance it in some areas. I'm gonna to try to do that mostly on the outskirts, the edge, really, because the chances of Jeff doing airbrush on the edge as opposed to in the middle are less. And the darker lines may interfere with uh, the airbrush design. Judy, how are you doing, my Judy? Obviously, the more alcohol you have on here, the longer it takes to dry out, but I think it's not a hefty price to pay in order to keep your inks flowing and keeping him from staining your board or your UFO. Everything I talk about here, everything Jeff mentions is all our opinion. It's what works for us. And it's by no means the end all be all of how you should do any of the things that we're doing. It's just the way that we do them. We always say that we're not teachers, we can just instruct on how we do things. There's a hair in my wrist. I don't think there's much I can do about that spot. It's just gonna have to be there. So essentially what I'm gonna do is fully dry this, and then we're going to spray it with an archival spray. I like to use UV archival in mats because in my opinion, it preserves your inks the best and dries pretty quickly. Do get the mat instead of the gloss or the satin because the gloss and satin all have like alcohol properties in it that will kind of wake up your inks and it'll look kind of like you spritzed alcohol over your piece. So just be advised. I'm getting a little bit of like coagulation in some areas, probably because of the moisture in the air. Ugh, hate that word. What? Okay. Amy, how have you been? Haven't seen you in forever. Hope things are well. Yeah, it's been rainy here for a good week for sure. 
since we got back from Mexico, it's been raining. And I think it started right after we left. There's definitely a lot of um, condensation. You can tell that it's been raining a lot and the air is dewy because of how long it's taking for this alcohol to evaporate and because of the bit of coagulation that's happening. But we're almost done with this part. You think you must be putting too much ink down because the color is never this soft? That's exactly what it is. If you put too much color down and not enough alcohol, then everything gets really dark and your colors seem to mix together more quickly, in my opinion. And if you just like the softer look, then definitely just explore using less color and more rubbing alcohol. That's so great. Amy, I hope you get set up in your new studio soon and it's better than even your last one. You turned out some great art, ma'am. It's 19 degrees in Colorado. Heidi, are you in Colorado Springs area? That's where Sandy and my sister are. It was so close to being done. Just this like little Mercedes area and an area over here is really all that's left to dry out you really want to make sure it's fully dry before you add your archival spray i'm not sure that it makes a whole lot of difference ultimately but it could um make it take longer for the archival spray to dry Something I love about doing anything fluid, like resin or alcohol inks or even acrylics when someone mixes acrylics for me, because it doesn't work when I do it myself, um, is that you can never predict how it's gonna turn out. I put the color down knowing what colors they were and that was all that I knew for sure is what color they would end up being but the flow of the piece is always random for me with my application style. It's like Christmas morning, as it were, or a birthday. You know it's a present, but you never really know what it's gonna be, and that's kind of something I love about this kind of artwork. There's way to there's ways to control it a little bit, but I have a lot more success when I just help it along to do what it already wants to do. All right. I'm going to do another just quick pass over to make sure we got all the edges. Oh, what a spot. Jeff has already prepped his airbrush area over there. Another reason your inks could be um, not this soft is from manipulating it too much as it's drying. So here's what we look like right now. Ooh, ah. Not hugely excited about these two little bits, but with alcohol inks, you really have to pick your battles a lot like with resin. If I were to go in and try to 
do something with these, it's going to affect everything that's touching it. And so knowing that Jess gonna do airbrush and we'll probably use a couple stencil backgrounds, I'm not that concerned with it because if it's very bothersome, Jeff can hide it with literally anything. So, Sam's always lurking in the shadows. Oh, Joy, you're in Colorado Springs as well? We should set up another class in Colorado Springs. We have a lot of people watching from there. This is multiple arts in one day, for sure, for sure. I got you, Kim. All right, I haven't used this in a while, so I'm shaking it a little bit extra. As with anything that we do, we use aerosols, resin, sanding, alcohol inks, anything but regular air, wear a respirator. I cannot be responsible for anyone's health but my own. And so listen to your own body and take whatever precautions that you need. So now the disclaimer is gone. I'm going to open a window. You guys find me a place to teach in Colorado and I'll be there. I need room for at least six. You need at least six to ten people in room for twelve. Okay. You need people for Well, I need to make sure I have a space. Percent. Yeah. No, but we need the people. We do need the people for sure. So we need Minimum of 10, max of 20 students and a space that can hold that many people. If you, excuse me, touch your board and it's still warm, then your this is going to dry faster than normal. I always spray paint uh, not laying down just in case there's big drips that come out. My husband taught me that. One really good coat of this archival spray should be good. You don't want to drench it and make it drip. You don't want that much, but you do want a full coverage spray. Also, since this is matte, you can see right now it's shiny, but when the spray is dry, it will go back to the mat that it looked like before. It'll look frosted. Which is actually a really cool effect. And then if you add resin onto it, it'll brighten it all the way back up. Don't hold your heat on your archival spray for too long because it'll kind of bubble up if you kind of scorch it. Heck yeah, Heidi, let me know. If you find me a space, then um, you get a free seat in the class. <gasps> What's up, Jen? My bracelet, do you love it? Boop. We would love to teach another class in Colorado. We had so much fun last time. I don't sell any alcohol inks on my website, but I have them linked. The ones that I use down in the description box below this video is an Amazon shop link. And that's just a link to all the things that we use that we don't sell. If you touch your surface and it's sticky at all, then it's not ready. But ours is ready. Now I just gotta make sure my husband's ready. You ready, B?
So should I just turn this around or should I put them up there? Well, I can't. I'm not going to airbrush putting them down like that. Okay, so my question was, should I turn this around or put them up there? Um, it's hard to tell because, like, So let me set you guys up. Come here, big boy. Come here. So if we do airbrush hats on the channel, is that something you guys would be interested in slash would you want to purchase one? I'll just say yeah. like all the ideas. Arlene Bowie says, hello. So Jeff is using some of our eye stencils. We have them on our website. What's up, Robin? Well, you are in luck because Jeff's about to airbrush on this piece. Do you need a spray adhesive or anything? Good call, Vamp. So with an airbrushed, nope an alcohol ink background like that, you could really put anything on it or you could leave it as a finish all on its own. Stonecoat recently did a video uh, highlighting Jeff's airbrushy skills. Do you have to have an airbrush to use the stencils or something else you could use? You could totally just use spray paint. Definitely tape it off though. Spray paint would, you can't really, I don't know how much spray paint would get in there. I mean, we could try it, but you can sure try it. Or you can just trace it. You could probably even trace the big parts because a lot of these smaller parts are not necessary. I just put them on there just for reference of where the eye is. But a lot of this you can just trace. 
I bet you could like sponge on some acrylic too. I haven't tried that, but I don't see why that wouldn't work. Just make sure you have your stencil all the way down so that um, your paint doesn't get under the stencil. What Jeff's doing now, what he's using the stencil for really is just to map out where the eye is and then he paints over it. Voila, eye. Like if you do that with spray paint, um, then you can just take like a Posca pen, fill in all your little gaps and your eyelashes, and then color in your eyes. Jen says, that's so dope, and I agree. What color airbrush are you using for a paint? Uh, this is transparent black. This is a very, this is a really good paint for portraits called Transparent Black by Calmart. Um, I prefer it over golden because it's a, it's a little bit different black. Like their golden black is like a really funky, almost uh, grayish blue. This is more true to uh, a transparent black. It is very forgiving, very, very light. So if you just spray, you always want to start out light because you can always add more. It's basically like resin. Um, you just start light. Just get, get your light, light lines, kind of where other lines will be. Because if you don't like it, this is so this is so light that when you start to darken it, that other paint will just kind of blend in and disappear. from traced it I don't, I, you guys don't even know <laughs> I'm, I'm like thinking out loud of how I how I made these and I really want to remake them Jen says her makeup already looks better than hers does on a good day see same it's not makeup it's shadows this is not makeup Erica keeps telling me that I, I need to do makeup and this is not makeup. This is just the shadow of a facial structure. Yeah, he does tell me that all the time. And then I remind him that women wear makeup to create shadows, to create depth and contouring. And Color is a whole different thing too, because that's a whole big part of it, right? You have to have the right color to do that. This is one color. <laughs> That right eye, the one in the pink, almost looks like a cat eye on camera. Joyce says, that looks so cool. I'll email you for more info on space for class. Super excited. Thank you so much, Joy. Looking forward to it. What's up, Cynthia? Heidi was thinking for the lip stencil. I think I'll try the spray paint idea. Yeah, try spray paint first. Um... It should, should work well. And then Jeff also has his like blob splatter type. I don't know if this one's on there though. There's a blob in the stencil pack. Any plans on painting a Wednesday? Any plans on painting a Wednesday? I haven't found a picture that I like. I need a need a picture. I need a. Oh yeah, he he's gonna need a reference for Wednesday. Normally, if you 
you do a portrait like this, you start with a, um, a transparent smoke. Might be a little too dark for first timers. What is the tonal difference between the smoke and the... It's very, very light. It's like very, very, like almost to the point where you really can't see it. Um, but that would be on a white background, not something like this. It would be, it would be really tough to see it. You'd still be able to see it, but it'd be, it would just be too much. That's why I started with this. I love those stencils because you can just turn them any number of ways and get the straight edge that you need to create a nice line. Would you consider um, doing a portrait on a big alcohol ink background? I mean, this is it's nice and smooth, and it has like a good, good tooth to it. So it's not like sometimes if something's too smooth, it just the paint will stay wet, or it will it will almost it's called spidering, where it just kind of if you get too close to it because it's super smooth. Mm. This is, this is decent. I, I don't mind it at all. I think I have a 24 by 36 over there that's been just staring at me. The background almost looks like it's um, one of those Lumi or Avatar portrait things that's in that app that everybody's using right now. From here it almost looks like she should have a mask on. Jeanette says it looks amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Have you guys uh, ever airbrushed before? paint is very thin too so you're not going to get a solid line you know like especially if there's already paint down it's not going to look that solid because it's this is so it's so transparent that it just kind of blends in it'll it'll make what what you've painted darker but as far as doing a solid line it's not i, I wouldn't wouldn't rely on it so you would you switch out to I'll, what I'll probably end up doing is adding like a transparent, or I'm sorry, a, uh, a carbon black to this. Just a teeny bit. Just to make it a little darker. How do you keep from adding too much shadow? You're just barely, you're barely doing it. I mean, you're just barely putting it down. And you could, you could see where you've, where you've put it. Um, and that's why the transparent is, is good for that. Because if this was just black, or like, you know, the, the shading gray of golden, it's really dark. So if you put a little bit too much, then you're committed to that area. There's no erasing airbrush, really, right? Yeah. You just kind of blend it back in or something. 
this, I think with this eye, yeah, I think with this eye, normally I make my eyes to where they're not touching, where they're actually below the line, below the eye line. I'm just going to get a little bit here so I can... When Jeff teaches me to airbrush, he says that um, it may not look like you've done that much, but you have. And so... Another reason when you do the stencil, don't blast it like with a hardcore black or dark color because you don't you don't want to be committed to these lines like how the how funky that is. I mean that is I don't even know how that even is a thing. I have to fix that. where I got these eyes referenced from. Can you guys hear everybody okay when he's talking? Just trying to test where the mic is. What's up, Clara? Cynthia wants to know, I have not tried airbrush yet, but would like to learn. What airbrush would you recommend for a beginner? Do you have one on your website or... Where can I order? Do you have an affiliate? I, I would use um, I would use the Iwati Eclipse. Um, that's what basically it's what this is, but this is a gravity feed. Can you see that? Like it's like. Yeah. So this is an HPCS, and this is HPBCS. Yeah, I would, I would, I would get that that the HPBCS. Okay, so he says the Iwata Eclipse HPBCS. Yeah. These are for like. We have a less a expensive bit. one as well on our Amazon link. It's a master's. Oh, yeah. Those are decent. Oh, God. Why did I do that? Man, that is like... Um, that master one is, a, is decent. Like, if you're just wanting to learn, maybe get that. Um, you definitely want to get a decent compressor or airbrush compressor, a small one. You, you, you want a good a good amount of air a good uh, a good regulation of air and a cheap compressor is not a good compressor to have yeah see trying to do these eyelashes it's just like a shadow like this looks like they were just saying Jeff has yeah. great eyelash control yeah, this is like I have the air turned up way too high for this. Jimmy, turn it down. No. I'm just filling it in right now. What do you recommend having your compressor set at? Uh, if it's that one that I told you guys to get, I mean, normally you would want it at probably around 30 or 40 PSI because it's going to have to. It's a siphon, 
so it sucks the paint up through and out. This one, it just kind of falls down into it. Air pushes it out. Oh my gosh, this is like killing me. Oh, I did one of these first, and then we'll go on. It's very frustrating, y'all. So just, just know that. <laughs> Not that easy at the first, so just realize you're gonna have to realize that that it's not it's not something really simple that you pick up unless you're like Erica and she really picked it up fast. He flatters. What is Jeff using right now? Is it an eraser? No, this is Exacto Blade. I'm just scraping away the paint. Um, it just gives you a highlight because you kind of lose it when you're when you're painting the others when you're painting like the lashes and the shadows and stuff. And this right here will give you a line. So that you can kind of see where your eyelashes are when you put them down with your darker color. And your eyebrows. It just kind of defines stuff. Did Jeff mention a moisture trap? Yeah, you definitely want a moisture trap, especially for a day like today. Like, I'm sure that the one I have is probably going to be a little full you always want to put don't put your moisture trap on your compressor but put it more towards the end of uh, like some people put your moisture trap like on your compressor like you they attach it to it and then just think about all that air that's going through and then out your hose so what I normally do is attach a hose to the compressor and then another and then this is the moisture trap here. This is attached to all my other brushes over here. Because I have a lot of, there's a lot of hose going here. <laughs> all the hose in the house. Mm -hmm. um, so you're basically catching more moisture. I would assume because there's so much, I have so many hoses. So if you're catching it at the, at the compressor, then they're not going to catch it all. I, that's what I assume. Like, that's... That's then, what works for him. Yeah. It's a little bit too hard, but... What are you going to do? Remember the rest you of your can, eyebrow. You can use... Um, you can use an eraser for this stuff, too. Eraser is good for the eyes right here, so you can get a kind of a softer. A softer. Um, where you're just not scraping the paint completely off, but you're just barely getting rid of it. Right here where the eye dips. That's um this is a basically a pen eraser. Didn't even color the eye, so Holly said she found a Sears and Roebuck Pro airbrush that unused from the seventies at an estate sale for like two dollars in the original box and everything. It was pretty cool. Um, next time you see one, love to see what that is. we'll buy it off of you. The erasing and doing the exacto blade is just knowing where those little parts are. I'm doing too much at one time. 
I feel like I would mess up and do too much erasing. Why well, you just kind of softly do it? I would just go ham like when I add paint to resin. See, he even highlights a brow bone. Like, he knows what he's doing. He could do, he could do makeup. You can take a pen. And give it a little bit more detail. What kind of pen is he using? Oh, it's a fine point Posca pen. I get too close and blurry. I went too, a little too heavy on the uh, shadowing. But the good thing about using this Posca pen for the actual eyelashes, whatever lines you did with the airbrush just looked like shadows. Love a good shadow. Um, I have purple sapphire on order. I expect it like by Monday ish. I may have one in there. Hold on, let me go see. You can also use uh, these guys, A little electric eraser, but this will definitely take the paint off really fast. So unless you're just doing like really true highlights, it's very fast. I always like to put a little highlight right here just for a shadow for the eyelashes. So, Kim, I actually did an audit of my inventory um, yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday, actually, and... Uh, I found two purple sapphire and a whole bunch of paints that said out of stock when I really had a couple in stock. So there are right now two purple sapphires currently. Thank you, Clara. Clara knew that before I did. That's a great highlight maker. So are you going to keep the eyes a lot safer? Are you going to keep the eyes pink and blue since you dotted in the, the blue one? I can still paint with that, especially with airbrush. You can... Be careful arting with Poscas because if you add too much pressure, you could blurp.
I mean, I, I'm just doing the eyelashes. Sounds good. If you guys are subscribed to our newsletter, then you got an email today with discount codes and restock information. We're thinking about putting a subscribe button on the TikTok or YouTube. Like with, with it's TikTok. Like an affiliate. Yeah, but YouTube has it too, I think. YouTube has a membership. Membership. They're basically the same thing, right? Yeah. I don't know. They are. It's just another way to support your favorite artists or channels on either platform. Doing it like this and then going over with the uh, exacto, and then airbrushing it really gives it layers. So it's just like with. Fluid art, you want to do layers. What baby? But we just kiss the um, the mic. So you can airbrush over the pens and hide them. Ooh, that is a lot of pain on there. Well, Amy didn't do the scratchy, highlighty part from the Exacto blade. And you didn't scratch it yet. What's up, Amy? Amy Johnson said, those eyebrows are actually awesome. Can he do mine? Sure. Right after he does mine, you're next. Does this count as microblading? Oh, but um, shh. that's kind of how it works. Previous way is always so much better. Uh, you're not alone, B. Any woman out there that's ever done her eyeliner will tell you that one eye is always so much harder than the other eye. Okay, well. Well, I'm just saying. We get it. It's hard to make both eyes perfect. Hey, do you know if you sent my order out yet? Um, was it from the fire sale or like an order order? What's up, Jay Meeks? How you doing? Sherry says, Erica, have you started to airbrush yet? Um, I've airbrushed like two or three things. I did okay. Um, I actually was notified the payment came in when we were in Mexico and um, Vamp just told me about it uh, the other day after we got back. So um, she'll go out today or tomorrow. She's already cleaned and ready to go. I just got to make sure I have the proper size box and package her up. Jamie says, what's up, ATD fam? This is gorgeous. I agree. I think we should do 
a side by side feed one day and you'll do like a portrait like just eyes and then I'll do my like eye makeup and see which one's done first slash done better it's kind of a who did it better even though I know that you're gonna be better gonna be makeup, no you're gonna do essentially what we're doing right now You would have makeup on, and this would just be plain person. Of course, yours would probably look better, right? Uh, no. Just judging from looking at those eyes right now, no. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Claire said, I was thinking that just now. Who does the eyebrows faster, Erica or Jeff? Well, I feel like Jeff could probably out eyebrow me. Um, he's using a Posca pen. I don't know what size though. I think a medium nib. No, large... Oh, it was a large nib. The light blue is large. Oh, the light light blue is large, and the black outline that he just did was um, I mean. I You're adding dark black now? Yeah. He has switched. I should have. Normally I do the eyes first, I paint the color first. Well, nobody has any complaints. Kim says, I'm actually getting my eyebrows microbladed on Thursdays because I'm tired of having two different eyebrows. I understand the struggle. Um, can you put the highlight back in the eye before we're done? Jeff does blue eyes almost all the time. Um, he's done green, I think, and he's done honey. I think it's just because the, Jeff usually doesn't do color portraits. It's almost always black and white or sepia tone. And so dark light eyes like blue, or like a light green or a light honey color always just stands out the best on the particular color portraits that he does. But if he were commissioned to do a different color, he would certainly do it. But you know how it is when you paint just because you want to paint, then you just paint what you, what you see. What about us brown eyed girls or hazel? Do it. Nothing against anybody's eye color. I'm going to just say it's because I'm his muse. But he's not against painting hazel or brown. Do you ever paint that part of the eye white or do you just erase? erase. 
paint it, if you paint it white, it'll look cartoony. And now because I put too much black down there. I put too much black, put too harsh of black. One eye is bigger than the other. I don't know if it's like that on the stencil or I really want to redo these. I don't know where I got these from. I think I just did them. Did one and then made one bigger, one bigger, smaller. Like I didn't do them like that. It's just what is this? So Jeff is his own worst critic. Was that last tool an eraser? Uh yeah, it was a pen eraser. And now he's using an X-Acto blade to highlight the lashes and kind of take out some of the stark black that... Um, that was just terrible. I don't even know what... I put too much black in there. That's my problem. So these are the kind of erasers that you could use. A pen eraser, which is a very abrasive eraser. Um, this is an electric eraser, which sometimes they don't work because the eraser is so soft. So I've cut one of these up, an old one, and just fit it to this size so I can just really get a good burp, 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 burp. That's what's in there? Yeah. Oh, um, pen erasers in there. You can also use these. If you're working on canvas and a smoother surface... These work good for, for getting a really good, like where the puffy of the eyes are, this dip right here, this right here is a really good um, to shape this without making a harsh line, because that's not a line, it's just, it's a curve. That's why you erase certain areas so that you can make that, that curve or that, you know, or a dip, whichever. How are you going to finish the piece? Um, we'll probably, I don't know, would definitely need to do something in the bottom half. I don't think Jeff's up for it today. Sometimes when you get frustrated with a piece, you just have to walk away from it for a little bit, you know? And so I think this is where this piece ends for today. But I think she looks good. I think... It'd be cool to have a cloth coming over her face because it kind of looks like that right here. But um, who knows? Who knows what we'll end up doing with her? It's crazy how this just looks like a forehead and he didn't even do anything up there. It just fits. Oh, hi. It's just so, it's just so dark. Working on a small piece like that, you really have to be careful of adding too much. Like you guys are saying, how do you know? And towards the end, you know. Because you can't do any more black. You can see this. Um, a lace drape? Maybe. Jeff hasn't painted lace in a while, so maybe. But we'll see if he wants to pick up with it tomorrow. He has to walk away from it yeah i get too frustrated and then i'll end up painting over it i don't want to do that so i think it's healthy for people to do that if you're if you're just at a point where you're just frustrated with a piece just walk away from it because next time you look at it you may see it with different eyes I, that may not make sense kind of like when you go smell perfumes in the mall and you have to smell coffee beans in between to like refresh your nose Sometimes you just have to just let it live for a minute. I think I just did too much detail at one time, and it just kind of got away from me. What's up, Sam? Is it Lydon or Leiden Arts Consulting? They get it totally. Anyways, you guys, this is um, the finished piece for today, but 
We'll come back in and do something different with her later. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe it'd be resin tomorrow. Who knows? Uh, definitely Sherry. Think it's awesome? Same. Lidden. Lidden Arts Consulting. That sounds so fancy. All right, you guys. It's finally stopped raining, so I'm going to take Bowie out. I hope you have had an amazing day. Don't forget that we are having a sale on the website. Use code RESTOCK, R-E-S-T-O-C-K, for 10% off um, through the weekend. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a thumbs up and comment in the description box down below if you have any questions or suggestions on what you would like us to paint next time. Uh, be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. And I think Jeff went to check the mail or something, but um, always remember that we do the test so you don't have to. Love your work. Thank you so much, Lyddon. Uh, so, yeah, you guys have an awesome day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bubba, did you say bye? Did you say bye? You did. Thanks, my boy. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. I said bye.